Pandemics have been the bane of humanity throughout history. Rather appropriately, I'm recording this video while locked down in my office. Although the past few centuries have witnessed numerous epidemics and even a handful of pandemics, like now, none compare to the Black Death of the 14th century in terms of percentage of the Earth's human population killed in a very brief period of time. Caused by the bacteria Yersinia pestis and carried by rodents, the plague infects people through flea bites. Prior to the dawn of antibiotics, the few times in history the bubonic plague popped up, it had devastating effects. Highly lethal if untreated, symptoms include fever, severe pain, and black pus-filled boils covering the skin, hence the name. Lovely. Although some scholars believe the bubonic plague may have contributed to the collapse of the Roman Empire in the 2nd century AD, the first well-documented recorded instance of it arose in the Byzantine Empire in the 6th century AD. Named after the emperor, the Justinian plague that lasted the next 200 years eventually killed over 100 million people across the Mediterranean. And that's an insane number of people today, but back in the day, it was super insane. About 500 years later, in 1334 in the northeastern province of Hoppe, it struck again. By the time it was over, nearly two out of every three people in China were dead from it, and it didn't stop there. By the 14th century, international trade spans the Eastern Hemisphere. From China, then ruled by the Mongols in the East, to England in the West, trading caravans journeyed the Silk Road and other routes, while the great ships of city-states like Venice and Genoa sailed the oceans, spreading commerce and, of course, horrific diseases. The Genoese Black Sea port city of Kaffir on the Crimean Peninsula was the first site of the Black Death that would eventually ravage Europe. For nearly a year before the plague came, Kaffir had been under siege by the Tatars, the powerful Golden Horde whose territory spans from Mongol territory in the east to the Danube in the west. In 3047, when the plague arrived, the Tatars ended their siege, but not before they catapulted plague-infected corpses over the walls and into the city. Way! Although experts dispute... <laughs> that is a dick move. Although experts dispute the precise origin of the contagion, many believe it was from the same plague that had devastated China a decade before and had just taken 10 years to make its way across the Horde's vast territory. Regardless, after the siege, the Genoese and Kaffir established a pattern that would repeat itself throughout the pandemic. Ships carrying the plague from one infected city would visit a new city, bringing the plague and spreading the pandemic everywhere. So, in 1347, a handful of ships left Kaffir with those on board believing, or at least praying, that they were free from plague. Ah, but they weren't. And soon after they docked in Constantinople in May 1347, the plague was spreading throughout that center of international commerce and trade. Thereafter, as ships left Constantinople, they carried the plague elsewhere. By September, the plague had spread to Marseille, and by October and November, to several ports in Italy, including Messina, Genoa, Venice, and Pisa, the seaport for Florence. From its early arrival in Marseille in September 1347, the plague quickly spread up the Rhone to Lyon and southwest towards Spain, and both were under the thrall of epidemic by March of 1348. Bordeaux was also pestilential by the spring of 1348, and from that commercial hub, the plague spread to a number of sites including La Coruna and Navarre in Spain, Rouen and Paris in France, and then Belgium and the Netherlands. Ships from Bordeaux also carried the plague from Markham Regis in England in May of 1348. It had reached Bristol and Pale Islands by June and London by August of that year. And while all of this sounds like really rapid and fast, it's like, yeah. Now we have planes. <laughs> the plague also tore through Italy. Nearly three quarters of Venetians and seven tenths of Pisans died during the Black Death. From April through October 1348, 80,000 people died in Siena. And although contemporary accounts vary, between 60,000 and 100,000 died in Florence. In some, it is estimated that half of the population of Italy perished during the Black Death. By the fall of 1348, the plague had reached Oslo, Norway, from which it eventually spread to Denmark and Sweden in July of 1349. The Prussian town of Elbing on the Baltic Sea suffered from an outbreak in August 1349, from which the plague then spread south into Germany, which was already besieged by plague, moving northward from Austria and Sweden. The plague 
was everywhere. The Black Death eventually made its way to the Russian city of Novgorod in the fall of 1351, with the larger outbreak occurring in spring of 1352. Moscow succumbed to the plague in 1353. Although there is some disagreement on the exact figure, it's estimated that the Black Death killed in the ballpark of around 60 percent of the European population. I don't know why I'm smiling, it's, it's just absurd. Reducing the Earth's total human populace from about 430 million to about 350 to 375 million. This was by far the worst known of any pandemic in history, only rivaled by the Spanish flu of the early 20th century, which infected about one in four people and killed about one in 20 in the span of just a couple of years, even reaching into the Arctic. For reference, when the Spanish flu hit, the human population was also much higher at around 2 billion people. All adding insult to injury, given it followed the then most deadly war in history, which kills another 40 million people or so. And let's not even talk about polio, tuberculosis, and all of the other horrible diseases that were killing people at that time. It is absolutely no wonder that people needed to blow off a lot of steam in those roaring 20s. Gotta party it up Great Gatsby style because everyone's dying. Going back to the Black Death, there was a silver lining. With so few people remaining after the pandemic burned itself out, European laborers saw an increase in bargaining power. Way! <laughs> Serfdom, a form of quasi-slavery, ended in many places, and wages and the standard living of peasants did increase. Well, I suppose those are good things, but, you know, 60% of the population died. <laughs> These changes led to other transformations in European society and its economy, and when urban populations swelled again in the 15th century, the middle class of bankers, merchants, and tradesmen grew. From this, the Black Death was one of the first steps towards the Renaissance, the Enlightenment, and the Civil Rights Movement. As for more modern times, forgotten but not gone, the plague continued to pop up here and there over the centuries that followed the Black Death, including killing 10 million people in India alone in the 19th century. Today, it remains alive and well, so to speak. In July of 2014, in Yumen, Gangzhou province in China, 151 people were quarantined and the entire city was closed after a 38-year-old man died from bubonic plague. It is believed he caught it from a flea that was on a dead marmot that he had been handling. Luckily, the CDC says modern antibiotics will still effectively treat bubonic plague at present. For another interesting pandemic that seems to have been directly connected to the Black Death, do go check out our podcast episode on the forgotten plague, Dance Mania. It's linked to below. Now, this might sound hilarious, but it turns out it was totally terrifying as people dance themselves to death in a zombie-like state, because apparently there's just never anything funny about pandemics. It's a shame. Let's do a bonus fact. While the Black Death killed off a significant portion of the human population, there were still plenty of humans to go around. This was not the case about 200,000 years ago when the human populace dropped so low that we can all trace a common female ancestor known as mitochondrial Eve. This was not the only time this happened, and we all also have a common male ancestor known as Y-chromosome Adam, who lived during a separate period in history than mitochondrial Eve about 90,000 years ago. In fact, around 70,000 years ago, humanity is estimated to have been down to only about 15,000 people thought to be because of an ice age. So we almost didn't make it. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Smash that thumbs up button if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, why not check out another channel I do called Highlight History, which I'll link to below. Thank you for watching.